Joffrey Renly Rob Stark are all thieves. They'll bend the knee or I'll destroy them. The newly anointed Lister was but a sheep in a den of wild, hungry wolves. As regent, Benfrey would not allow his nephew and king to be subjected to such corruption. Corruption which had embedded itself firmly within the inner bindings of Sevensport. If only the likes of Sir Colmore Bloom and Sir Stephen Roseheart were still alive, they were fiercely loyal and obedient, men such as those would make things much easier. The time for the cleansing was now upon him, for too long now many lords had been left unchecked and completely unchallenged. It was high time to purge the realm of those with ill intent, those with ruthlessly ambitious motives who cared not for the kingdom or their liege but for their own personal development and personal gain. It was time for these self-righteous individuals to be relinquished of their power. Benfrey first planned to make changes to the small council by removing the rot that had set itself deep within its core. He planned to relieve certain individuals of their highly valued positions of influence, allowing him to then appoint new members, loyal members made up of true lords and knights. Benfrey would make sure Lister would attend all council meetings from now on, hopefully being surrounded by such men on a daily basis would help inspire and influence the young king down the right path. He would start with the removal of Danies Corbury and then Yorick Templeton. Despite the Lord of Wickedham being a good man, he was unknowingly to himself completely under Danies' control and influence. There was many good lords and knights who could take their place. Lord Vardis of Gultown could be a good choice. The Lord enjoyed his wine, but was truly honourable and kind and would surely be a good addition. Also, having the wealth and the fleet of the kingdom's second biggest city could only be a positive thing. Secondly, he decided he would search the realm for boys of the king's own age to be warded in the capital. Sons and heirs to powerful lords would be favourable. This would also be a strategic move which would help his nephew gain favour with noble houses, hopefully earning future lords loyalties and friendships. As he descended the stairs of the council tower, he caught a glimpse of Lister sleeping against a tree. A book rested on his stomach. Benfrey let out a sigh. This is no place for a king to rest. I best take you to your chamber. As he took his nephew into his arms, the book fell to the ground with a soft thud. Benfrey grasped the book and picked it up, glancing at the title, Legends and Heroes of Anderholia, by Archmaester Damon. Beneath that was a short message, To my young king, may the knowledge of our past help you pave the way for a brighter future. With love, your Uncle Damon. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Northern Kingdom of Andalia where we have our first proper episode as High King Lister Sevenstar, first of his name, the 10 year old king under the regency of Lord Benfrey the Just of House Highstar, our uncle. And we're also obviously being tutored by our other uncle, Maester Damon. So, um, as we've said in a lot of the POVs and such, we're going to try and purge the Council of Court. We're going to try and fill it with honourable and loyal lords, even if they're not as good as the ones that are already in position. So we're going to be doing a little bit of that to sort things out. The war is still raging on between the Firehands and Racks, but I think it's about 95%, wasn't it, or something like that, in favour of the Firehands. Right, so, let's sort out our council. So our hand is Benfrey. We're obviously going to leave that. We are going to remove our Master of Laws, um, Lord Yorick Templeton. He is a decent character. Oh, wow, he's got the flu and he's a little bit stressed and stuff. But, um, yeah, as we know, even though he's a decent character, he's very, very much under the influence of Danies Corbury. And that's the sort of thing we want to be removing from our court. So we're going to go for Lord Vardis Grafton of Gultown instead. As as we know, he is a crown loyalist along with Kristen Creed as well. So we want to reward those. Wow, Benfrey's opinion is 100, which is awesome. And Benfrey Highstar is obviously also in the crown loyalist so we've got him as our new master of laws we do have that faction of independence from the grey stock so what we're going to do with our new master of laws for his first job we're going to send him up to Greyhold to try and improve diplomatic relationships with the grey stocks they've always been a very loyal house to house seven star it would be a shame if that was to not continue we do need a new master of coin we're going to resign Danies. we do not want him in that position anymore as Ben Freer, the first thing we're going to do is get rid of that we're going to keep Lady Cass as our Master of Whisperers uh, Master at Arms Benfrey who we appointed to the job last episode Maester Damon and then Septon Wayne of the Crossfort as well so the rest of that's pretty good we are going to need to find a character we're going to need to look for who's the best stewardship person in our realm so we've got 
Dainies of the Fingers, who we obviously don't want. We've got Hilario, who has a very bad opinion of us. Um, Ermin, the Regent of Old Castle. Yes, we'll go with you. We've only got to send you a small gift, 15 gold, and then we can invite you to court. You can be our new Master of Coin. House Bloom, a loyal house. He's a humble character, and he's trusting as well. Um, yeah, he's a genius, which is awesome. I have him around. This was the ward of Liana, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, it would be good to have you around, actually. So, yeah, we'll definitely get you over here as our new Master of Coin. Right, minor titles. Bodyguards, Joe Arach, Nana Harlow, um, Ben Free of the Lance, Pia the Vixen, and we need one more. Let's have a look who we've got in our court, who's good at Marshall. Let's go for, yes, Warren Blacklass, why not? And Commander of the House of God is Lady Pia still, that's good. If we remove Ben Free, is it going to upset him? I don't really think we need him as our bodyguard anymore, as he's actually on the court and on the council now, so we could probably replace him with somebody else to get any, with someone else important involved. We will remove... Actually, no, we'll keep Templeton on side a little bit, so we will keep him as Master of the Swans. Master of the Horse, we're going to remove Benfrey of the Lance. Let's go with... So who else has got good opinions of us? Who is fairly loyal to us? Um, The Riswells. Yes, let's go for Lord Benjikot of the Rills for the horses. Makes sense. High Almanoth, who else has a good opinion of us? Um, Lady Sunderland, but she's not a High Lord. Alen, Aline Josso, yes, let's get the Jossos back on side. Cupbearer Sir Joe Arak, I'm happy with that. As well as Benfrey the Joss, we've got two for some reason. Paramount Knight, Lady Pia the Vixen, fair enough. Court Tutor, Maester Damon, um, Quincy, whoever he is, is our King's Justice. We have room for one commander. Let's have a look who we've got. Wow, Quentin Botley, Master of Ships in Mandalia. Yeah, we'll go for you. Um, is there any other positions? Ambrose, our father, is an advisor. I'm going to fire him from that role. Sorry, father. But I'd rather make use of it with somebody else. Let's have a look. Who have we got that's loyal? Could go for Dondarian, who's pretty loyal. We do have Creed, though, who is actually a crown loyalist. So let's reward him for that, even if he is only a minor lord. Hopefully we can get him to become a loyalist by doing that. As I said, all of this might not make sense game-wise, but it makes sense law-wise, which is what I like to try and do. Um, Master of Whisperers, let's get you to... Hmm, let's get you to scheme in the Grey Cliffs. Let's see if we can try and put an end to that um, independence faction put forward by the Grey Starks. Right, so we've done that. That's one thing sorted out. We now need to sort out a match for our sister princess, Kyra, who's 16. Pretty decent, but let's see what we can do with her. What match can we get? Right, so we've got the Belmores, who are one of my main candidates. Let's have a look at what the Belmores have to offer. Um, so Lady Elena of Strongson, only 26. She's married to a Lingrave, interesting. Um, frail and celibate. Ah, okay, so I don't think she'll be having any more children, but she does have three sons by the looks of it. Eldrick Belmore, who is 10. He's the heir, so let's see if we can arrange a betrothal between him and... No, not us, but we do have our sister Renna, who would be a decent option. She's 12, um, or would Alice be a better option, who's 7? Um, let's go with Renna. She's fairly close in age, so Rennie and Eldrick Belmore. That's going to get the Belmores one of the powerful lords of the Vale on our side before Daenys Corpory manages to influence them. So perfect, that's good. Let's... um make him important as well we can probably get him a tutor next who else have we got we've got the lancers who we know he they're already fiercely loyal though so do we really need to we don't really need to try and get them on side with a marriage so we can avoid that that's good i want to look for some houses that we've not really had marriages and such with yet let's have a look at don darian 19 got a son who's one year old so we're not gonna be able to do anything with him the Red Wolves are still too close. What about the Viprins? Lord Arbut the Able of the Trident. He has a daughter who's 24. She's already betrothed to a Viprin. Okay. And then he has another son, Justin Viprin, who's only four. So it's a no there. The Seymours. Lord John the Unredder. His son and heir, Sir Enger, who does have two sons. Harris Seymour and Pyron Seymour. He's seven. So we could arrange a betrothal between him and Alice. They're of age. Yes, perfect. Another High Lord. We want to get these High Lords on side in the Riverlands. We want to get them more involved. And we also can't marry into the usual suspect houses. Because thanks to Enger II and his many children. Most of them are going to be pretty inbred if we inbreed any more. So we, we don't want to do that. So we want to go with these newer houses. So yeah, Pyre and Seymour. We'll try and get him a Guardian once that is accepted as well. Um, what about the Red Forts? 
He only has daughters, so his heir is Selene Redfork, who does have a son, but he's only two, so that's a no. Um, what about Lord Vardis? He has a son who is five, who's got good stewardship. So let's assign a guardian for you. Someone in our court who's got good stewardship. Bayern, Firehand, perfect. Let's try and get some of these people in our court. We could become friends with these as Lister. What about the Royces? Lord Hugh of Runestone. He does have another son who is 11. Uh, you know, a brother, sorry, who's like, wow, nine diplomacy and nine martial. He's gone for, let's make you important and let's... You're too young to marry one of our sisters, unfortunately, because most of the others died. But we can assign you a guardian who's good in martial. Let's go for Benjicott, seven star, and then we can get you in our court. Try and get you on side. The Hunters, Lord Raymar of Eastwold, doesn't have any sons. His heir is his brother, who also, oh no, he does have a son. Owen Hunter, who is nine, a twin and a poor fighter. He's good at stewardship. Let's assign you a guardian, somebody good at stewardship in our court. Let's go for... Okay, we've got Lady Sunderland. Oh no, just our vassal. Um, we want someone who's actually in our court. So let's go for buy and firehand for you as well. Get these Vale Lords on side who are not under the influence as Danis, as I already said. So... Um, we do have Lord of Haraway's Town, Lord Danies Rivers of Haraway's Town, who's a bastard and a twin. There's not much about him at the moment. He's got good learning. Can we, um, hmm, assign a guardian to you, someone with decent learning in our court? Let's go with, can we send Damon? Yes, we can, so we can get you in our court as well, Lord High Oak. Perfect. I did notice as well that Lord Benjicott of the Rules has green sight. So we have two families of green sight now in our um, realm, which is awesome. He has two daughters, uh, one and one. Oh, and then a dead son as well. Would be awesome if they got a marriage pact with the Greystarks. That would be really cool mixing those um, houses together. Let's have a look in our court at the children that we've got in court as well. Get them guardians. As we know, at the beginning of every reign, these episodes, we do have a lot of things to sort out. So I hope you can bear with me. Then again, I know a lot of you do like these sort of episodes where you get to see a little bit about the people who are in our court. Guy near Harlow, he's four, so there's no point giving him anything till he's six. Roga Shycross is nine. So she's good at learning. So can we go for a faith focus? And yes, we can. She's got Idolizer as well, so that's perfect. Let's Design a guardian for you. We'll go for the Septon. There we go. Septon Wayne. Perfect. Um, who else do we have in our court? Any other young people? No idea who you are. You're a courtier in the Vale, so you're probably um, Ben Free's ward, I'm imagining. Um, what other kids do we have? Melora Harlow. Only four as well. Um, Rhonda Harlow. She's two, so there's no point yet. Ariane Rack, who is nine. Wow, very, very good learning. So let's go for Faith with you as well. And as I'm a Guardian, we'll go for... We'll go for the Septon for you as well. Perfect. Um, Owen Seven Star, our brother, five. Not quite there yet. Medgar Rack is three, so not quite there yet. Um, Alice Seven Star, we've already got you sorted. Ragnar Saltworm, he's only three. Lucius Malister, who is our friend, but he's slow, so he's not overly impressive. Wow, he's not very good at anything. Learning education. No, he's slow. That would be stupid. Let's go for... Oh, God, what do we go for? What have you got? You've got Haughty. So let's go for Pride. Why not? And then um, as I'm a Guardian for you. Someone with decent martial. Uh, do you know what? Joe Arak. Where was Joe Arak? He'll be a good one for you. Why not? Um, we've got Marwin Corpory, our cousin. I don't know why he's here. Um... Moribold Rack, who is six. Perfect. He's our friend as well. He's got the quick trick. Wow. He's very impressive. Stewardship and Marshal. Oh, let's go for let's go for duty for you then. Why not? And for your guardian. Let's go. We could just send you to Damon. Why not? Let's send you to Damon Snow. Be perfect. Court tutor. Melilio Shycross, he's only three. Liana Malister, who is eight. Fussy, haughty, she's got good learning, good martial, good diplomacy. So we'll go with diplomacy for you. And for a guardian, who have we got in our court that's got good diplomacy? Benfrey, Vard, let's go for... Hmm, now let's send you to the Viper and Woman instead. Vladimir Templeton, heir to the High Lordship of Templeton. Ah, okay, he's here because he's Benfrey's ward. Too young. Enger, our brother, who... Oh no, that's our cousin. Who is his educator? Maester Damon Snow. No, he's got to be better off going with someone with a martial focus now. So let's have a look who we've got for that. 
Let's send you to Benjacott, your uncle. Perfect. Um, any other young people? Roman, seven star, our other cousin. He's very good at intrigue. He's got an intrigue focus. So let's assign a guardian for you. Someone with very good intrigue. Let's send you to... Well, no, I don't think it'd be very... We could send you to Maynard Greystock. Yeah, why not? We'll do that. Then we've got Lionel Redguard. Ah, okay. Lionel Redguard, who is Cassie's ward. And he's like the, one of the last Red Guards. I may, I'm going to make him important. I may give him the crossing. I may give the Red Guards the crossing. And I think that's most of the children who are in our court that are old enough to have people at present. I think we've gone over nearly all of them now. Um, yeah, we did him. Yes, yeah, so that's everyone. That's the son. That's the people over six sorted. But yeah, obviously in Seven's Guard now we have House Fulman, which I do need to make a sigil for at some point. This is who Cass granted those lands to. Right, let's unpause. We're waiting for our new Master of Coins to turn up. We're waiting for this war to end between the Firehands and the Racks as well. Um, hopefully we'll have some new POV characters coming in, as obviously we've lost a few. Lord Hugh of Runestone declined the proposal for an alliance with Lord Danies the Wise. That's good. And he's now got his adult picture, Lord Rue of uh, Hugh of Runestone, 15 years old. Interesting. Um, your Wisdom and Mercy are legendary. I gladly accept the guardianship contract between Maester Damon and Lord Danies. Perfect. And there's another one. Perfect. Let's try and get people on side. Your Wisdom and Mercy are legendary. I've decided to accept the suggestion of a betrothal between Princess Alice and Pyron Seymour. Right. What are you good at, Pyron? You've got the duty focus. You're good at Marshall. So let's get you a guardian. Get you in our court. Who have we got? Um, Pia Sweetblood. Yes, why not? Let's send you to Pia. How is um, the Sweetblood doing in the Vale, actually? Lord Rogar Snow of Dartmoor. 15 now. Not overly impressive. Decent diplomacy, decent stewardship. Love that sigil. But yeah, at least they're going well. I do love using some of these sigils where you mix the sigils between the two houses. Um, Lord Moribold, the Fearless, has accepted Lady Cass of the Father's Field Peace Offer. Okay, so she has won, which is very, very interesting. I wonder what she's going to do with him. That's the worrying part. Peace with you. I have decided to accept your suggestion of a betrothal between Princess Rennie and Eldrick Belmore. Perfect. Very nice. Okay. Uh, bless him on you and your house. I gladly accept the guardianship contract between Sir Byam and Willem. Perfect. Sir Byam Firehand and Willem Grafton. Perfect. Bless him on you and your house. I gladly accept the guardianship contract between Lady Pia and Pyron Seymour. Perfect. Right. Um, when... Oh, we still need our advisor as well. Did we not have an advisor? Um, where's our advisor gone? I thought we had... I thought we filled the advisor with Kristen Creed. Ah, perfect. Your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I accept your gracious invitation and join your court forthwith. Perfect. Your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I gladly accept the guardianship contract between Sir Bywum and Olwyn Hunter. Perfect. Miguel Snow has arrived at your court. Sir Elmore Bloom has arrived at your court. So we can now get our new Lord Treasurer, which is going to be Ermin Bloom. And then we need a new advisor, apparently. Um, who was our... Joe Arak? Joe Arak is no longer our advisor. Why not? Ah, here he is. Lord, Lord Joe Arak of the Warrior's Way. Okay. What's happened to... Well, we'll put you back as an advisor. What happened to um, Moribald? Oh, looks like he's been murdered. I'm guessing Cass murdered him. Was Oh my god. Was boiled to death on the orders of Lady Cass of the Father's Fields at the age of 50. Boiled to death? Oh, you <laughs> That... Ouch. You evil bitch. That, what a horrible way to kill somebody. Ow, you don't want to get on the wrong side of Cass Firehand. Oh my god. Okay, um, we've got an idle council member. We'll get you to collect taxes. Wow, that, that's actually brutal. Um, yeah, we can do a couple of things there. We need a new commander and a sworn shield. We need a new bodyguard. Um, let's go for... Hmm, who have we got? Let's go for John Hornbreaker. Why not? And... We need a new commander. Who else have we got? Nana. She's not really got many commanding traits. Dany Corbury, no way. Um, we'll go for John Hornbreaker for that as well. Lady Cass of the Father's Fields declared Lady Cass's claim on Realwater Crossing on Lord Jonas of Realwater. No, Lady Cass, can you um, please end this war? Thing is now, we have to wait for the council to vote in favour of it, which is annoying. They've risen their banners. Oh my god, they've only got 91 men. That's going to be a slaughter. Uh, Lord Gilbert of Sea Dragon Point has declared war against the tyranny of Lord Wyndon the Brute. 
on Lord Wind and Rizwell. Okay. Oh, that's a different war. Rizwells that aren't under our control. That's part of the North. That's fine. Um, the vote on whether to command Lady Cass Firehand to end her war against Lord Jonas Blaintree has been taken. The council voted in favour. Your Grace, I'm afraid I cannot end this war. My cause is just and as such you have no right to command me to stand down. Well, that's disappointing. For God's sake, no one does as they're told at all, which is so annoying. We could try and imprison her. I don't really want to imprison her and it's going to go bad there. We didn't... Mm, this is annoying when our vassals don't do... We need more control. Um, some random guy of the Bloody Gate died. They don't seem to last long commanding the Bloody Gate, do they? Which is a shame. Let's forward things along. We want Lister to wage up. We're still waiting for our youngest brother, Owing, as well, to get to the age of six. Um, Lord Donico of the Dragon's Den ransomed Valorous from the clutches of Lord Daini. Oh, yes, I forgot to mention that, didn't I, at the beginning of the episode. Um, Lord Donico of the Dragon's Den. So, Lord Donico Shycross is the new Lord Shycross, as Sir Damien the Lawgiver was sent to the Night's Watch by Daini's Corpory. So, he's got rid of one of his problems. So, that's another High Lord and a very impressive character on the wall. There's a lot of impressive characters on the wall. And Beyond the Wall has nearly all been conquered by the Wildling King, Torig the Just, who is attacking the Frozen Shore. So, when they win that war... If they win that war, they will own all beyond the wall. So the Night's Watch could become important. Belvazar the Brilliant could have to call upon aid from Andalia to help him defend. Uh, Lord Jorah of the Warrior's Watch ransomed Ella from the clutches of Lady Cass Firehand. Wow, okay, so she's still got some racks under in her custody. Don't cross Cass Firehand. My god, I don't think even Edric Firehand or Anger the Evil would have boiled a, a High Lord alive. That's brutal. Absolutely terrifying. <laughs> I think we'll go for our mid POV while we're waiting for stuff to happen, though, guys. So I hope you enjoy. Lord Vardis Grafton held his breath as he rode through the stranger's gate. He had dreaded the prospect of this journey north. He was in the beating heart of Old God's worship. With the exception of houses Oxter, Brightmere, and Salzard, Vardis had expected to see all sorts of horrid things portrayed by these heathens. And Darlian citizens or not, growing up in Gultown he was raised on tales of human sacrifices and all sorts of nasty things the Greystarks permitted. When he first arrived in the Grey Cliffs he thought he would be welcomed with the sight of people being roasted on a spit or nude women frolicking around one of their bleeding trees. Instead, as he entered the Greystarks home county he was met with the silent bustling of a city. He expected he would encounter many things here, but not this. The silence actually seemed to unnerve him more. As he rode on, many small folk passing him by would take the time to give him a short bow or a polite but curt nod of the head. Soon he saw a rider coming out to meet him in his retinue, a soldier carrying the banner of a white direwolf. This way, me lord, he said gruffly. A bit taken aback by the man's lack of decorum, Vardis simply nodded. He and his personal guards were led to the imposing centre of the county, the towering keep from which it got its name, the Greyhold. Upon reaching the keep, Vardis was led to where he sat presently in the Great Hall. Soon a man who could only be Lord Maynard entered and quietly sat beside him. The younger lord was brawny and yet had a very subdued presence. His face was a mess of wild hair that hid very calm and calculated eyes. In short, Maynard Greystock was a contradiction to Vardis. He certainly looked the part of a heathen, but he didn't act like one. In fact, the suspected traitor seemed happy to see him. Lord Grafton. Maynard exclaimed. It is a pleasant surprise to have you here. I've heard nothing but good things about you. The young lord patted Vardis on the back. He jumped slightly in surprise. Vardis awkwardly cleared his throat. Lord Greystock, you do know why I am here, correct? Aye, Grafton. The Lord Regent suspects me of being a traitor, correct? Vardis' heart sank. Had he made a mistake coming here? Was this all an elaborate trap? He wasn't sure how to respond to Greystock's rather direct answer. Well he said quietly. You did try your hand at forming an independence faction, did you not? At this, Maynard laughed bitterly. Aye. It was more of a strategic choice, but don't worry, I am not one who would betray his king. I I wanted my home back, my lord. Maynard suddenly sounded a bit less at ease, yet genuine nonetheless. Vardis began to chuckle. Perhaps he had gone mad. Gods no, had he drunk too much ale last night, he thought. Was this an alcohol fueled fever dream of some kind? Was it all that simple? So you're saying, 
You formed an independence faction with the intent to get caught and dismissed from the small council? So you could come home? Yes, it was quite easy too given the volatile political climate. Vardis closed his eyes, a wave of relief filled him. He leaned back into his seat and ran both hands up and over the sides of his head, palming his hair. Everything all right, my lord? Maynard queried and Vardis nodded his head. Sitting back up straight, Vardis coached himself in his head. I have a duty here, he thought. I'm here to improve Seven Star Greystar relations, and I've let my nerve and my drunkenness get the best of me. You are a lord, the king's eyes and ears up here. Act like it. So you have no quarrels with King Lister or Lord Benfrey? Vardis asked, getting back to the topic at hand. Maynard shook his head. I have no quarrel with my cousin, my lord, nor Lord Benfrey. Although, Maynard paused, his mouth was half open as if a word had been caught half formed in his mouth. The unease Vardis had felt returned suddenly, stronger than ever. Although what, my lord? He asked carefully. Maynard, to Vardis's surprise, took his turn to lean back in his chair and run a hand through his hair. I will be candid, Lord Grafton. I have been foolish. How so, my lord? I've run away, that's what I've done, when you strip down anything I have said. I don't follow, my lord. I could have done so much in the capital. I could have negotiated with my father-in-law to make peace with Lady Firehand. I could have prevented so much needless death. I could have even helped investigate what happened to my cousin, Queen Lyanna. Instead of all that, what did I do? I added to the chaos with my false faction and ran home. Vardis was at a loss for words. I... I see. Maynard gave him a grim smile. This is my problem to deal with though, nor was it my intention to be so gloomy. My apologies, my lord. Vardis swallowed his apprehension again. No offence taken, Lord Greystark. I did not intend to let such heavy news weigh over you. Maynard laughed at that. Nonsense. It's in my blood to be a grim bastard. Now let us get to what you came here for. The drinks are on me. Okay, and I've noticed that Cass Firehand has remarried again. She's now on her fourth husband. Her husbands keep dying, which is worrying. Again, another worrying and scary thing about Cass Firehand. The Firehands are absolutely terrifying. There's a war going on in the east. I don't really care about that, to be honest. Lord Benfrey of the Lance used a favour on Lord Yorick the Candid to force them to join all of their factions. Does that mean he's joined the Crown Loyalists now? Yes, Lord um, Yorick the Candid has joined that faction. Perfect. The Independence faction has disappeared from the Grey Starks, which is good. We'll leave our Master of Laws up there. We'll see if we can improve diplomatic relations first. Then we'll move him on them. We'll move him on to the Red Wolf lands afterwards and see if we can get them under control. At the age of 43, your subject, El Daisy Lancer, died of um, attending to chamber business. The curse of chamber business strikes again in Andalia. That's took many a dear high lord and king among them. Lady Rhonda of Hollow Hill has inherited castle of grey garden from mistress lay of grey garden okay nothing too important for us to worry about there to be honest okay so lady cast firehand has won her war lord carl of iron oaks decided to exile baynor wainwood okay so is he gone to the night's watch as well now no he's just moved court it seems to the command of sevens guard and okay he's got a Valerian Bride. Go away, I'm getting so fed up with all these Valerians. At the age of um, 59, your great uncle, Lord Maladar of King's House, died comatized in bed. Oh, okay, a Stark. Interesting. Very interesting. Um, but yeah, the Firehands have now conquered these lands. She's allowed Lord Jonas Blaintree to bend the knee, which means she's now got an old god first man um, vassal. I can't see them staying that way for long. I doubt it'll be long before um, they're converted. Probably not peaceful. Oh yes, Donald Crownless. I wanted to go to his grandson, another Donald Crownless, who is an absolute genius. Um, Lord Edmund of Hardvale died. We'll have a look at that in a second. So yeah, we want to get you. Let's assign a guardian for you. I want to try and get you. What, what are you good at? You're good at diplomacy and intrigue. You've got a diplomacy. So we have to go for intrigue. Um, assign guardian. Diplomacy. Benfrey high star. Let's get you in our court. I want to keep you important. You're very impressive. Did we actually sort out a... I don't think I actually sorted a marriage out for Kyra, did we? No, we didn't. 16. Um, oh my god, I don't know. We want somebody of high ranking who's in our own court, if possible. Let's have a look at age on here. Let's go for people around your age. Got to be someone in our court that we can 
marry you too. A high lord would be the best option, but there's not really anybody around that we've not already married into. Um, so yeah, Lord ha er um, and Draxler has died. There's got to be somebody that we can marry our sister to. There's got to be somebody around here. He Donald Cranus is only 10. He's too young. Um, the Royce, how old's his brother? 12. Arnold Royce. He might not be a bad option. Considering the Royces have turned down an alliance from the Corbreys. It's going to be a little bit inbreedy again, but it makes sense. So let's go for it. Kyra. Perfect. There we go. Send. Let's get that betrayal sword. Get the Royces on side. That's another Vale house then on side. May you live in harmony contentment. I um, have decided to accept your suggestion of a betrayal between Princess Kyra and Arnold Royce. Perfect. This guy's a skilled fighter and strong, so we might actually get to see someone good with lamentation for once, as well as that Royce bronze armor. Uh, peace be with you. I'm glad. Uh, I will gladly accept the guardianship contract between Lord Benfrey and Darnold. Perfect. Have we got anyone we can betroth to you in our court? Um... Got some tool hearts still that we do need to reland. Got Ariane Rack, which might not be a bad option for Donald Crownless. What traits has she got? Unless we've got someone with better traits. Well, we do have a Malister, which might not be a bad idea, as they are close by each other. I think the Malister would be a better option. So, yeah, we'll send that. Perfect. Okay. We'll forward things along. We still need our brother Owen to get to six so that we can give him... Perfect, that marriage has been accepted, so that we can give him his education. He's still five. Uh, Lenora is frowning at me. Waste of time, it will never fit. You've grown out of it, he says, but it's my favourite hat. Um, I will fit it if you help me. Give the hat to someone younger. We gain 20 piety, or we gain willful. Let's try and get willful. Did we get willful? No, we didn't. That's a shame. I was hoping we could get ourselves another trait. Oh! And at the age of 42, your bannerman, Lord Donico of the Dragon's Den, died from a bad case of the flu. My god, so who is the new Lord of the Dragon's Den now? Lord Damien of the Dragon's Den, Shycross, 17 years old, skilled fighter, strong, content, just, brave. Greg, wow, this guy's decent. He's got two siblings. Can we arrange a marriage between you, Damien, Shycross, and who do we have? Do we have anyone who'd be a good marriage for you? Not, no, not really. No one at all. What about if it was a betrothal? Do we have someone a little bit younger that we could marry to you? No, no one at all. So we'll let you sort out your own marriage. Wow, so two Shycross is gone in one episode. That's not good at all. Not good when the Lords are dropping like flies. We've lost quite a few, even though there's not much happening. There's still a lot happening, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, we want to get Owen of age now to six. A daughter was born to Osha Botley and an unknown father named Keller Snow. Okay, would it, would it not be Pike? I don't know, but let's keep forwarding things along. Our money's improving nicely as well. There's not much we can do as a child, so we're just going to have to forward along instead and hope that we can um, get... Uh, oh, a daughter was born to Sir Ermin Bloom and Megel Snow named Marcella Bloom. Um, nice, okay. Nothing too special about her yet, but at least it's another Bloom in the world. Lord Lucan of Maidstone has declared revolt against the rule of Lord Brynden of Blackwood. Okay, can we... Command him to end that war, please. Let's try and do that. We don't want any wars going on anywhere in the kingdom. The vote on whether to command Lord Lucan Stoke to end his war against Lord Brynden Blackwood has been taken. The council voted against. Oh, well, that's a shame. Never mind. At the age of 25, your acquaintance, Meredith Hill. No idea who she has died. Why does it even need to tell us about that? It's nothing important to us in the slightest. But I think when that Red Guard Lord comes of age, I will land him. Oh, and we've got a epidemic. What have we got? Um, okay. I can't see any epidemics anywhere. No, there's nothing. There's, there is no epidemics, unless it's just not popped up yet. But I can't see any epidemic. Oh, no. Word of epidemic. We received news of an epidemic in Yeeti. The information is vague, but word is people are dying like flies, and the fear of the disease is spreading as fast as the affliction itself. Furthermore, the condition is reported irreversible as well as incurable, and the scattered records of the evidence are worrying. With no source of evil revealed, people are turning to their gods and on each other to protect themselves from the contagion that many call the new Great Sickness. Surely we can't have another Great Sickness over here. We've already had the Great Sickness once. I'll be fuming if we get it again, like, not even a century later. It's hardly that... Wow, we're in the year 6730, I've just realised. That's insane. Uh, Goran of Hammerhorn... Uh, Lord Gorin of Hammerhorn died of poor health. Okay. Let's just keep forwarding things along. Surely Owen will be of age soon. Uh, Maester Orman. 
um, died a natural death. Nothing too important. Don't really need to be told about these randomers dying, do we, to be honest? Uh, Cast Firehand is now known as The Cruel. Oh, the names just keep getting better and better, don't they, for the uh, Firehand. So we had Enger the Evil, followed by Cast the Cruel. Oh, I love how it um, rhymes. Obviously, you've got the E-E -E and the C-C. -C. That's, that's pretty cool. I do, I do like that, to be honest. And now we've got one child lacking an education focus. Owen, very good diplomacy-wise. So let's go for humility. Let's get you a guardian. Who have we got that's very good at diplomacy? Vardis Grafton, perfect. The perfect choice, considering he's now a new lord. Um, and hopefully he'll be important as well. We've not had much with the Graftons. It's nice to get some different houses involved. Hopefully the Belmores and the Graftons and such can be a little bit more important going forward as we've not touched on those much in the past of the series just yet. At the age of 18, your subject, Rihanna Seven Star, died attending to chamber business. The wife of Lord Clifton, the chamber business strikes yet again in Andalia. As always, it's a Going to the toilet is so dangerous in Andalia. I think it's more dangerous than anything else. Uh, okay, that's something down south that doesn't really apply. We're just forwarding along. We're just trying to get through time. Try and move through this Regency a little bit more. Wow, our manpower has now improved to 63,000 though, which is good. We've got seven diplomacy, six learning and six stewardship. So Lister's coming along fairly nicely. Hopefully we'll get a few more events soon where we can try and get some stuff going on. Um, a war in the north has ended, that's fine. Uh, Lord Benfrey II has been a leal and able servant, having successfully completed many tasks in the of Andalia. Um, okay, so we're going to pay him gold, which is annoying. I hate when the regents take advantage, especially when it's someone like Benfrey who wouldn't do that. And Theo has called in a favour on Galbert Greenskin, okay. And what was that other one? Oh, Sir Damien the Lawgiver has died a natural death at the age of 58 upon the wall. So he wasn't at the wall for long. Seems like that finished him off. So that's another... There's not much luck going on for House Shycross in this episode, it would seem. But to be fair, I wouldn't be too bothered if I was House Shycross because this new lord is very impressive. Lord Damien of the Dragon's Den. He's very, very impressive. I do like this guy. Um, at the age of 61, your subject, your owner, died a natural death. And John Greenstar has had the stranger removed from their treasury. He died under suspicious circumstances. Who is his son and heir? Lord Osmond of Moonsgrey. Nothing too impressive about him. Okay, so there's a lot of people dying under suspicious circumstances. And every time that someone dies under suspicious circumstances lately, it seems to be in and around the Vale and in and around Damie's Corbury's lands, which is worrying. Very worrying. Yes, 6731 now. How old is Lister now? Still 11. It's fine. When he gets to 12, we get to pick his proper education, which is going to be nice and interesting. I'm looking forward to that. If we can get that done before the end of this episode. And hopefully we can have a stream overview um, soon. Because we tend to do that at the beginning of every rain. So it would be nice to do one for Lister. So look out for that, guys. Um, hopefully I'll let you know more close to the, to the time, as I do record the episodes a bit earlier. Um, our charity work is going well in Sevensport, which is perfect. Um, your Grace, Brynden Blackwood, has been defeated in his reign of misrule and has come to an end and stability has been brought to the Blackwood Vale. Lady Pera Blackwood, his heir, shall henceforth rule the Blackwood as your lady. Let's have a look at Lady Pera Blackwood then. She's already married to a randomer and she already has a daughter as well, Zoa Blackwood. Okay. Only 15 years of age. She looks very first man and very black at the wood. Um, she's slow. There's a lot of slow people going around the Andalia at the minute, which is worrying and that's even in lands where we haven't been inbreeding with so that makes it even more worrying if it's happening without the effect of um the inbreeding that's been going on in north andalia as we said that's why we've got to branch out a little bit now of our marriages um that's something down south doesn't really apply to us i don't know why it's telling us all that at the age of 62 your great aunt jonquil seven star died of depression ah yes um the lady of Old Castle, um, which is one of Enger the Second's sisters, isn't it? Yes. Lord Carl of Iron Oaks decided to exile Alec Wainwood, the master at arms of those lands. Where's he gone to? He's gone to Hardvale, so he's not gone too far away. He's not been sent to the Watch, at least. There's a lot, a lot of people now on the Night's Watch. Let's have a look at the Night's Watch, actually. So we've got, obviously, Belvazar the Brilliant. 
um, as Lord Commander. Uh, Lord Benfrey II, using his power as his regent, has decided to remove Lady Cass from her position on your council. Clearly he thought Lady Cass unsuitable for the task. I'm sure he knows what he's doing. Okay, well that's interesting. We'll have a look into that in a moment. But yeah, obviously we've got Commander Belvazar, the brilliant. Who have we got at the Shadow Tower? We have a tall heart. Commander Malador, and then East Watch by the Sea, we have Commander Danies, who's an old Ironborn, and then in Brandon's Gift, we have a random Septon, which is interesting. So yeah, let's have a look. I'm gonna, as the Night's Watch may become important at some point, considering that the Wildlings are reforming, would be interesting, as I said, for Belvazar to have to call upon Andalia for aid. Maybe he can, well, he's already redeeming himself a little bit, but if he manages to push back the Wildlings, it would be a full redemption cycle for him, wouldn't it? Uh, who have we got in his court? Let's have a look. Have we got anyone from interesting houses? Um, Theo Bloom. Oh, it's not one of our blooms, though. Um, okay, we've got a Lancer at the Night's Watch. Interesting. There's a lot. Of, we've got a Forester. Um, we've got a Malistar, Mathis Malistar. There's a lot of people from big houses here. Roman Seven Star, the one-legged Seven Star, still going. Only 53. I thought he was much, much older than that. Um, an Ice Mark, Anger Bloom. Ah, this is one of our blooms, so we have got a bloom at the Night's Watch. Um, there's a lot of people. We've got a Crow at the Night's Watch, which is interesting. Another Forester, a Shell. Um, Corman Josso, who was obviously part of the War of the Stars. The former Lord of the Crossing is there. We've got Garrett Oxter. A lot of Andalian people here. Um... Banor Wainwood. He was the one who was just banished, wasn't he? Or is this a different one? Maybe he was sent to the Night's Watch after all. But that's just at Castle Black. So at the Shadow Tower. Do we have anyone at the Shadow Tower from Andalia? Doesn't look like it, but we do have a Florent. Um, I just like to look. I just like to know these things. So it might be boring for some of you, but I know that some of you will enjoy seeing who is at the Night's Watch. East Watch by the Sea. Do we have anybody? We have Harbert Redstone, who obviously hates us. That's it. And then in Brandon's Gift, do we have anybody there? No, just all lowborn randomers interested. Right, so now we need a new spy master. Obviously, we're not going to go for Danny's Cobra. We could go for um, Byra Erinstar, but I don't think that would be a good idea. So we'll go for Benjikot Rizwell. Why not? And we'll get him to... Well, let's have a look at the factions. Let's get him... Yeah, let's send him down to the red... Wow, we've got a lot more loyalists all of a sudden. So we'll have a look at... Let's have a look at those in a second and see who the new loyalists are. Right, so we'll get you to... Um, hmm. Yeah, let's get you to Scheme in Rushmore. Yeah, so who's in the crown loyalists now? We've got Vardis of Ghoultown, Benfrey the Just, um, Kristen Creed, Yorick Templeton, Cass Firehand... Ellen, Eleanor Josso, um, Eleanor Belmore, so it's working then. Lord John Seymour, Lady Sybil the Young of the Neck, who, is that say it's our friend? No, just our vassal. And Lord Hugh of Runestone, the Royces. Awesome, so we've actually got a lot of people who've now joined the Crown Loyalists. So our plans have actually worked in the South. We've managed to get those new River Lords on side, as well as those Vale Lords that we want to see on side. So that's perfect that that has actually worked. I just want to get us to the age of 12 before the end of this episode, just so we can start our education properly. Spend a nice big sum on our education as well. Waymar Longthorpe has had an enormous flagship added to his treasurer. Nice. Very good thing for the sisters. I really hope that that epidemic does not get here. I'm just going to check again. No, it hasn't yet, which is good. It's just right over in the east then, the pox. And... Apparently the Great Sickness was, but apparently it's not there no more, so that's fine. Okay, no idea. No idea what epidemic it's currently on about, to be honest. Um, let's go back to Realm. I don't think it's going to be long before Real Water Crossing, as I said, will be converted to Faith of the Seven, now that Lady Cass is in charge of that. I bet that's what she's already doing. Verena Stark has had the Red Book added to her treasury. Is this the Queen in the North? Yes, it is. Nothing too impressive about her. Um, and she's also had a load of other stuff inherited. And Mistress Lysara, Lysara, Lysa of Dawn Forest has declared war against the tyranny of Queen Berenna, the Maleficent of the North. Interesting. Oh, okay, here we go. The cook accused me of stealing cookies. The Master of Whisperers instead I uh, insisted I had stolen his quill, and I was accused of making a lot of mischief. For once, I was innocent. I found the perpetrator, Ginnor, playing with the quill and stuffing his face with cookies just outside the stable. Ginnor Harlor 
I'll tell you everyone who stole the cookies and the quill. Um, we become rivals. Let us wreak havoc together. We become close friends. Yeah, it's always good to become friends. It's good to have an Ironborn friend as well. Maybe we can get the Ironborn on side a little bit there as well. Um, Your Grace, I write to express my consternation at the fact that Sir By and Firehand enjoys command of your armies. Okay, you're actually a pretty decent commander for once. Uh, hmm... Buy him, buy him Firehand's a good commander as well, though, so we're going to keep him for now. But we do have a potential future commander there in Lord Mooton. It would be good to get the Moutons involved as well. It's time for me to receive a proper education. Life is so full of opportunities. What will I become? Choose the level of high... Uh, do we get to... Yeah, perfect. We get to choose right. So, for our education focus, we're going to go with the learning education as we've got a lot of stuff to do with the faith and it's just different i want to do something different we've got two and we, we why can we not go for that westerosi characters are not allowed to choose this focus they must instead undergo training at the citadel as a maester to gain the learn well that's bloody really annoying but we do have decent stewardship so let oh that's so annoying that we can't go for the learning education we'll go for the stewardship education then instead we'll keep maester damon as our educator um do we not get to pick what sort of education we want to spend on. Does our father pick that instead? That's annoying if so. Because I want a high education. Lord Jorah of the Warriors' Ways declared the Broken Blanche Flint's Finger de Jour War over the Black Sheep Hills on Lord Benfrey of the Lance. Okay, interesting. Can we not command an end to that war? Because that land does belong to the Rax really. But then with everything they've been up to lately, it's... Oh... Okay, um, we'll sort that out in the next episode, guys, though. We'll end this episode here for now. Don't forget to stick around for the MPOV. Hope you've enjoyed. Sorry if it's been a bit of a slower one, as we've got a lot to sort out, but hopefully you did enjoy it still. Um, please don't forget to like and comment down below, and hopefully I'll see you all very soon for the next episode of the Nice of Andalia. Two full years have elapsed since I began my role as maester to the royal family and the realm. And so much has happened as I reflect back on it now. I usually refrain from doing so as it distracts me from my work in the present, but this milestone deserves it. The years have not been kind to my family yet again. Just months after I arrived in Sevensport, my poor dear sister the Queen Lyanna died in a horrendous explosion. Most talk of treachery, deceit and regicide, but the perpetrator is still unknown to us. From that day onwards, Lister, my dear sister's eldest son, my own nephew, became High King. He is a boy with a sharp mind and a ferocious appetite for knowledge. Pierre says he's a natural swordsman too, but he does not show much interest in pursuing his skill beyond the basics. By all accounts I've read, he is much like his grandfather as a child. Yet he could grow to be much more than his grandsire and achieve a great many things, but he is still only a boy. Who knows what future is in store for him? The realm was left in the capable hands of the regent and hand, Benfrey Highstar, and he has done much to heal the kingdom and just in time as it would seem cracks were beginning to show. I would worry for my nephew's longevity if it were not for Benfrey's shrewd rulership. Presently, the realm is at peace internally and externally. Ever the talented diplomat, Benfrey fostered peace by having heirs and heirs' heirs from throughout the realm brought to the capital for fostering. This was seen as an honour to be sure, but the threat hung clear in the air just out of sight. Most notably, that of House Templeton, whose lord may have good intentions, but he is ensnarled around Daenys Corfrey's finger. The young men came from all corners of Andalia, from the houses of Belmore, Grafton, Seymour, Crownless, Royce, Hunter, High Oak, Rack, and of course, Templeton. They act as the companions of the young king. Some, such as Murabold Rack, named after his poor late grandfather who suffered a cruel, cruel fate, and the Malister boy have become great friends of Lister. Inseparable they are. More recently, Lister's group has extended to include the young guy near Harlor, much to the disapproval of the court. The lad is iron-born, but I hold no prejudice against him. He's an apt learner and isn't sullying Lister's mind. As a young boy, Lister used to run around the palace with a wooden sword in his belt loops and on a wooden horse, his Destria, claiming to be the Lord Davos Redcard, the Giant Slayer, or Lord Stefan Roseheart, the Champion. Alas, even as he grows older and older by the day, he is still a boy. Slowly he will learn what it takes to be a king. I must admit, I will miss my nephew's more innocent days, but I am excited for the future of the realm under his rule. 
Benfrey has also made changes to the council since the death of the Queen, surrounding the boy king with sage and strong counsellors. The culling of court and council, as I refer to it privately, all done in quick succession. The untrustworthy were removed from court and office, most notably the Lords Templeton and Corbury, and were replaced. In their places, Benfrey appointed Lord Vardis Grafton of Gultown as Master of Lords, and Ermine Bloom, uncle to the current Lord of Oldcastle, to Master of Coin. These new members were good and honourable men that Benfrey could rely on. Unlike the questionable loyalties of Yorick Templeton, the puppet of Wickedon as I've coined him, and Danies Corbury, a man who wouldn't know honour if it struck him in the face, mayhap it happen sooner than later. These men only served the realm if it benefited themselves and their house's agendas, especially Danies Corbury, the conniving lord. If he had his way, he would sit on the throne itself. It pains me to say it, but he is a great man who has accomplished many things. But the wall would melt before he acted in virtue. His deceitful nature is both his greatest strength and weakness. He was, and remains to a lesser extent, the fawn in Benfrey's side. The past year has been quiet from him since he lost his council seat. No doubt he is nursing his wounded ego and feeling sorry for himself, but only a fool would count him defeated. I fear we haven't heard the last of Lord Danies. More recently, the Lady Cass Firehand has been replaced by Lord Riswell as Master of Whisperers by Benfrey, which, if I speak truly, makes me ever so glad. The stories of that woman's cruelty make my skin cruel and my mind conjure up terrible images of pain and suffering. Cass the Cruel, they call her, another addition to the list of inventive firehand monikers the small folk use. She was the one who ordered and carried out Lord Murabold the Elder's cruel punishment for the war he brought to the father's fields, and the loss of life he initiated. He should have been turned over to the crown for judgement. He denied a royal command to stand down, and therefore was a criminal in the eyes of the council and the regent. This, Benfrey has taken to heart. He feels as if the Lady Cass has far overreached herself, the irony being that Lord Murabold the Elder would have done the same. Perhaps Benfrey ought to have Cass boiled alive for her insolence. Finally, we come to the recent past. Just two weeks ago, Benfrey came to me and asked me to take King Lister on as my ward and to instruct him in the ways of governance, war and life. Lister is now aged 12 and growing into the fine young man, a capable swordsman, a dutiful scholar and a shrewd lord. He will make a fine king one day and with the looming shadows and disgruntled lords, I pray to the seven that he is ready when they decide to test his mettle.